Wanderers, welcome to the Wandering Dutchman podcast, season two, episode 48. Welcome to the show today as it's proudly brought to you by the MFL Foundation Junior Golf Tournament. Being hosted July 10th at the Huntingburg Country Club, our buddy and friend of the program, Teddy Hoops, is going to have the course looking like Augusta. And good news for you, if you've got a junior golfer in your life, whether they're in your household or somebody else's household, there's still an opportunity and chance to get them signed up. My buddy Dave over there is going to put the description down below. Check it out. Get signed up today. If you're a business interesting sponsor, we'll talk to you too about that one. But hey, July 10th. Goes to a good cause. Thanks to these guys for allowing the MFL Foundation to come on board for this month. The Wandering Dutchman Podcast. Where none of us are Dutch, but we all live in Holland, Indiana. Join us where we talk about what we all wonder about. This is the Wandering Dutchman Podcast. Coming to you from Smoker's Lounge. The Wandering Dutchman. There we go. Buckle up, because it's time. Sitting across from me, wearing the baby blue, with a mustache and the black rim glasses, and a little bit of tough of hair that's getting Cali blonde because he's out in the sun all the time, being a laborer, blue collar, for the city of Honeyburg Street Department, our friend, your friend, and everybody who you don't want to share a secret with, our buddy Zachary David Mace. What a douchebag. And the crowd goes wild. Sitting there in the middle showing off the guns, because not only does he do 12-ounce curls, he might lift a weight every now and then. It's our buddy in the bandana with the man bun, sporting the turquoise turtle and the turquoise rings. Looking better than ever, it's our buddy David Allen Smoker. Nice. And I'm your friend of the program. Original member of the founding three, probably least likely to be on a podcast. Certainly don't know why I got into this, but I love every minute of it because we're a tripod, Dave. That's right. I am Esquire, and joining us in Smoker's Lounge, well, we lost one, but we had three. Mm. We've got two. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of them is a certain owner of an excavating company Mm -hmm. in Huntingburg. No free ads. Yeah. <laughs> and then his right hand man. Well, we don't know if he's his right hand man. He may be his left hand man. But we all know him affectionately as Neighbor Doug. Hey. Neighbor Doug. I think Neighbor Doug was Mrs. Neighbor Doug here earlier? Just for a skosh. She she didn't want to hang out? Yeah, she's probably gotta go to bed. Oh, she, I'm going to bed. She's, well, you know, they've joined Back us the they've joined us for a few times here on the yeah. Friday Variety Show, yeah. and that's what we're at. It is the Friday Variety Show, Season 2, Episode 48. We appreciate you coming along. This is where we kind of talk about a little bit of everything and anything, because that's what makes it a Friday Variety <laughs> Show. If you're not listening to us on Friday mornings, hey, we appreciate you just listening in general. Go ahead, like, share, subscribe out. We appreciate it. We're mm-hmm. growing every week, which is a good thing. But uh, we could always grow more. Yeah. Kind of like that to a girl. Yeah. Spit on that thing. Go ahead and spit on. Don't spit on your phone. Don't spit in your car. Like, that's not what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But if we could kind of catch that lightning in a bottle, that would help us. What a wild deal. If Dave could come up with some snazzy one liner to really propel us forward or mm-hmm. i feel like i need to start drinking heavier again during recording episodes and surely something's bound to stick. Uh, s- s- something to s- s- slip out something may be bound to happen hey i'm gonna get us started fellas do it let her eat so this past week was an interesting thing that i was able to do awesome smoke dragon i rubbed elbows with the rich and famous on tuesday Hell, I thought you were the rich. No, not me. I mean, but, well, well, lifestyle. This is gonna. The the this is gonna throw you for a loop for a little bit because it was weird. But uh, the resort hosted the Good Good Midwest mm. Open. So if you are not familiar with the Good Good brand, mm-hmm. they are kind of an up and coming. I would say they've arrived pretty close. If you've got Peacock and 
a YouTube live golf tournament that you've mm-hmm. probably gotten there to that point. But they hosted a little golf tournament, mm-hmm. 36 players, Pete Dye course, a uh, beautiful afternoon, brought about almost 3,000 people out. Some drove as far as Texas through the night to get up there to watch mm-hmm. those guys play. Uh, we had some come from northern Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, a little bit all over. Like It was amazing where they came through. Uh, I volunteered to work security for one of the groups going out. Just so happened to be the premier group yeah, going out. I was going to um, say, just so happened in to In our be. group was Garrett Clark, who's kind of the, one of the main founders mm-hmm. of the Good Good Golf brand. Uh, super nice dude. Comes from Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, nice guy. Uh, next one was Austin Reeves, current uh, NBA player for the Los Angeles Lakers. Also in our group was uh, Brad Dalkey, who's played Augusta a couple times, played in the Masters, not just played Augusta, but a professional golfer. There's our boy. That is one of the good, good guys. There's our boy. Uh, Dave can put that picture up if he yeah, wants. I'm there's working, our, there's I'm our working boy. security hard there. That's Garrett Clark there. That's with the our swing. boy right there. Right above uh, the leaderboard is our buddy. Main Esquire. security guard, Esquire. Yeah, and so uh, Brad Dulkey's partner was a guy by the name of Marquise Brownlee, Ooh. who's got damn near 20 million YouTube subscribers. Wow. Uh, also in our page, or in our group, was former professional golfer, uh, Ben Colst, who, uh, nice guy, didn't say a whole lot, but he's a professional golfer, host podcast. Uh, he's an on-air talent for CBS, so he gets the cool job of falling around, and I think he's got a four iron in his hands. Was he the... All black, yeah, kind of stockier guy. Yeah, yeah. That's the 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 commentators on Peacock or the YouTube Live guys were saying that uh, something about yeah he traded his clubs in for a microphone. Thank God or something. Yeah. Like that. That's what <laughs> well, he said. I but don't he know. still, I mean, he was because I looked up what his net worth was and from like playing golf and back and forth from the Corn Ferry Tour to the PGA Tour, mm-hmm. he's still worth like five million dollars playing golf. Oh my, uh, and he rode with a golf influencer. Uh, Paige Spranick. Uh and if you're not familiar with Paige, go ahead and just type her in the old Instagram. Oh yeah, she uh, Googler. And I will. So yikes. this is uh, spent the afternoon with her. Super nice girl. Uh, honest to God, like we were talking about taking bets. Like we probably, we. I mean, just being honest, we we're like, oh, I bet she can be a royal bitch. Like just you know, the water's not cool enough. It's hot. It's not playing well. Like complete opposite. Super nice, down to earth. She was very kind to us, like, you know, very sweet girl. Uh, it was really cool. I noticed a dude that played that I have recently started following on TikTok, uh, Chance Taylor. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it's humanly possible to put any more tobacco in one's lip. Uh, and, and if you would and like, play golf, and he has got the nastiest – like Tennessean, uh, w- West Virginian head of hair, super nice dude. Oh yeah, and his his yeah. girlfriend, yeah, or wife his or cam- fiance, camera girlfriend. Yeah, she was pretty good looking. She runs the camera for him, and he he's a. I think he's actually is he going to try to get on the Corn Ferry tour? I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. I'm not sure either. But I think he's from is he from Johnson City, Tennessee. I think he might maybe. Be. Anyway, mm, so, wagon wheel song. So how they did it is is like they hosted up at the resort. They came up, those guys signed autographs, they hit balls on the range, they right. did all that stuff. Right. And then, you know, they went out and played. Yeah. Because some of, most of them are content creators, correct? All of them. Yeah. Almost all of them are content creators. Right. Now, like, so like a guy like uh, Marquise Brownlee is in the tech world. So mm-hmm. he does tech reviews. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's a funny story. We were standing there on the back of 18. Those guys came around the backside of 18, and I was standing there. Um, we were watching their cart because that was kind of, hey, make sure somebody doesn't take anything from their bag. Make sure somebody doesn't oh, get yeah. any, like, yeah. stays out of their cart. Like, his phone was sitting, like, there in the cart. Like, mm-hmm. somebody could, you know, and I'm sure it's password protect, all that other stuff. And we were talking, and he's like, hey, you know, great job today, guys. Like, appreciate it. And we we're making small talk. And I was like, yeah, you know, kind of a little bit of a YouTube podcaster myself. Oh, yeah, really? Nice. I kind of sold him on the idea. Nice. And I go, yeah, you know, we got like 911 subscribers. And he's <laughs> like, yeah, I'm working on getting 20 million this year. <laughs> you know? But I mean, like, not like, I was like, you know, it's so cool. Like, I admire, because I told him, I was like, I admire you because you've built this following. And I was like, did you see it like in a big spike? 
And then you just kind of stayed. And he goes, man, if you would look at my numbers, he goes, it's just been steady. Yeah. And I said, you know, we talked about it as a group. He's like, we don't want to do anything or something viral. And he goes, man, the viral stuff goes away. Like yeah. the hot Tui girl, like we are, we will forget about her within the month. You know, like it's just inevitable. Yeah. You know, it's just, she's not going to be around. So exactly. he was super nice. I really felt like a, a tool when I was like, yeah, we got 911 YouTube subscribers. <laughs> a tool, yeah. We're just trying to get to a thousand. And he's like, yeah, my goal this year is 20 million. Uh, but he does tech reviews. Um, kind of another like funny side note. We were, um, Austin Reeves was there. You wouldn't expect he's a guard in the NBA. I mean, well, tall. I, one of the boys was talking about, oh, there's going to be a basketball player yeah. there. He's tall. He's, you know, it's cool. Um, and I was like, hey, man, I really liked what you did on, you know, your part of my take. And he's like, oh, when was that? And I was like, oh, I thought it was fairly recent. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. I was like, I knew we were supposed to do some stuff with him. And, uh, but yeah, you know, that's cool. Thanks, man. And then I stopped. Like, he got done talking and I was like, it wasn't him. I was like, I've got names mixed up in my head. Mm -hmm. So I immediately, like, we're driving to the next, we're driving through the fairway, pull up my phone. I was like, it was Alex Caruso, another mm. white guy in the NBA. So the token two white guys of the NBA, I got him mixed up. But he was super cool about it. Uh, Garrett Clark, at one point, we were by the snack cart, literally gets out his wallet to buy snacks for like him his caddy and a couple other guys. And like we were giving them water, Powerade, anything they needed, like we could get it for him. And I look at him, I go, put your wallet away. He goes, what are, you like, what are you talking about? I was like, you're not buying. And he's like, handing the lady a 20. I was like, don't take, I told the or the resort, I was like, don't take it. And he's, she's like, this is getting weird. And he's like, oh, no, it's no big deal. I go, dude, you're not going to pay for grabbing a 10 bucks worth of snacks. Put your money away. He goes, here, it's a tip. And I was like, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But you're not paying for it. So, like, that lady's like, well, who do I bill this to? Like, it doesn't matter. The guy's the star of the show. Oh, Like, really? we can afford 12 to, Yeah. I mean, he's one of the founding guys. Yeah. So, there's him. There's a guy by the name of Bubby that he played in it, too. I like Big Mo. Uh, super cool dude. Yeah. He, so, him and his girlfriend for St. George, Utah. Because when he said St. George, I was like, oh, really? Oh, really? You know, <laughs> that dump down there? Yeah. But it was Utah. And he's like, man, it's so cool. You guys have been great. And meeting him in person, he is not very tall. No. But that son of a bitch is thick. Calves are probably bigger than what his, like his thighs, his calves. Like he's a stocky dude. Can you see which one Big Mo is? Yeah, over here on the right. Yeah. yeah. The little feller in the bucket out. Yeah. yeah. So those, uh, I think, so that's Big Mo. That's Garrett Clark. That's the guy they call Bubby. And I don't. Recognize the other two, and then the last one's Brad Ducky. I think he's joined them, but it was a cool, it was a cool thing. Uh, those guys were all cool. Um, you know, it was a long day. Yeah. Uh, but it was just, I mean, the the course was a lot, and and the thing of it is, is these guys as golfers, like they're good golfers, but they stretched it out. Like they played back from what would be probably the normal tees. Like like we would go up there and play on the. They whites. call them the tips. They didn't play tips. What's tips? Tips would be like you're you're stretching that all the way like out. Like the pros. Well, like I that. guess it depends. Some would maybe call them the tips, but like when we think about it, when those guys play, they put their back foot on the back of the tee box. Right. And they tip it out. That's how they play it. Now what about the uh what about the DOD King? Do you are you familiar with the DOD King? I heard that name up there a few times, but yeah. I don't, I can't tell this, you. This kid right here is, uh, DOD stands for Dungeons. Oh. Driver Off the Deck. Carter, Van, uh, I'm going to butcher his name and he'll probably roast me if he ever, if he ever sees this, but Carter Vanikier Smith, aka the DOD King. He's, uh, he's an, in, he's a uh, content creator on the internet, but now he's in a, he's affiliated with a podcast. He was wearing a real bright yellow shirt and white shorts at the at the Good Good Open. Oh yeah, and he, he, looks familiar. he hits. He doesn't use tees off the tee box. He's obviously driver off the deck guy. But uh, huh. I seen him up there. I watched the whole highlight reel on on Peacock. That's where I uh, I seen you, big boy. I'm well, that's TV what I. There. So it was cool. And I and I'll shout out. I don't. I didn't catch his name, 
So, like, when we first got started rolling, like, there was a lot of people from Dubois County in that area that I yeah. knew were up there. Yeah. So, there was more like, oh, Casey! Ca-! Yeah. And we're rolling by the cart, and the, and the guy that was riding with me, he he works at the resort as well. He's like, dude, who are all these people? And I was like, ah, oh, no, it was just a big deal. Like, and I couldn't ah! imagine, like, those guys that people are there to actually see, and they're like, none of us are Casey. Like, who the hell is Casey? <laughs> um, so, but anyways, it was cool. We got on... Uh, cause one is there off the left two, and then three is the long par five, four is the short par three, uh, five is par three. So they're like end of green of five and T box at six. We were there and some guy goes, Hey, are you Casey? And I was like, yeah, like Casey from like the wandering Dutchman. And I was like, yeah, what's up, man? And he's like, Oh, Hey, you know, so cool. Nice to meet you. A big fan. I was like, oh, I appreciate it, man. You know, hope you're having a good day, like that kind of stuff. Thanks for listening. And so he walks away, and then he comes back. He's like, man, can I get a picture? Because my mom would be mad if I didn't get it. Catch oh, the, boy. Catch like a photo. And I was like, <laughs> sure, man. So like, took a picture. So if he's listening to this, like, hey, nice to meet you. Appreciate it. But I was like, here's all these people. Like here to see these guys, and like I'm having my own, like Humble my brag. own little bubble of success. Humble brag. And we, uh, so we got up there, and some of the guys that we play the PBI with, his name's Brian, and uh, it, it he was he was up there, and I come we come around. He's like, ah, Casey, and then the guy next to him's freaking out, and he texts me. He goes, hey, you know why he's freaking out? Like he thought you were Luke Combs, and I was like. <laughs> Luke Combs can only wish to have this beard, but uh, yeah, it was cool. Um, you know, you realize like how you take, which this is like what's weird. Like Garrett Clark's been grinding for a long time, and like they've built this to where, and that's like I t- talked to Marquise Brownlee. I was like, "How'd you get started?" And he's like, "Man, I had an old laptop that I bought and just started recording reviews." And he's like, "I've just been at it that long," and it kind of like. I was hoping like to be able to have more conversations with these guys. I mean, obviously it wasn't the time or the place for it, but like, what's it take? Like, what's it, you know, cause for us, like for us, it's like a big thing. Like we come in here, we've done a full season, you know, we've changed some things up now where we've done some more and trying to interviews and look into where we grow. And, you know, like a lot of those guys, it was just steady Eddie producing and then it catches on and you get better at doing it and you get, you know, you start building that following and that base grows and continues to grow. And it just kind of was like a reminder of these guys have been doing it for so long. I mean, and they're young, like Eric Park, Eric Clark's probably mid twenties. Yeah. If that, right. But he's probably been doing YouTube videos or vines or something like that for, you know, five, six, seven years. Right. And I think he started in college. He was like a D two D three golfer. And he started doing this and he went to the NCAA and the NCAA is like, well, you can either play college golf or you can do the YouTube thing, but you can't do both. Yeah. And this was the time before the NIL and all that other stuff. And he's like, well, I'm going to go do the YouTube videos. Yeah. And I mean, it's worked out well for him. Adios, I mean, I think they got 1.6 or 7 on YouTube, large Instagram following, Yeah, you know, and they get to go play all these courses, you know, they don't. You know, they, I kind of like the Bob does sports guy. I kind of all out on him. I don't know him. Yeah, he does a lot of bagel reviews. Now, if you look at him on Instagram, he's only bagels? got about yeah bagels. <clears throat> but he's Bob about sports. Yeah, he's a big golf guy. They okay. do a bunch of golf guys. It's a, it's another group. Uh, <clears throat> does he have something to do with a guy by the name of Fat Perez? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they 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 got to play St Andrews. Stuff like that, you know. It, it's just um, they're just reels and shit that pop up on my Facebook all the time. He's always super hungover in the morning, eating bagels and shit like that. And he's moved on to the point of his life where he's into the taquito game. Oh, really? And when he sees a guy at the Seven Eleven and the guy knows him by name, you're you're in a bad spot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you're in there eating taquitos so much. You know. I want to try I, taquitos on the glizzy. Yeah, machine. we could do them. I got a whole box of Diablos at home. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if this guy's name's Fat Press or not, but he's pretty fat. He did you might. see? Did you see that he, TikTok I sent you guys today? Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> Fatter Perez. Yeah. There was a bunch of them, uh, but it was cool. And I mean, you know, the bad thing of it is, this was the only downfall. The guy that thinks people want to hear what he has to scream 
after they hit a shot. I shit my pants. Did you hear that at the U.S. Open this year? Uh -uh. I did. And it was like, what the f***? Like, I think it was DeChambeau or somebody was hitting. And as soon as he freaking roasts a drive, he's like, I think I shit my pants. Like, really, really loud. (laughs) Usually it's like getting a hole or... Well, you know, something like, along those lines. I imagine being there in person, it's awful, but on TV, I do get it. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's hilarious. Well, but the thing of it is, the bad thing, Dave, to your point, it started as soon as we got to the one tee box. No way. Hey, Reese, what's it like playing with LeBron? Who's the GOAT? MJ or LeBron? Oh, wow. Who's this? LeBron? Like, what's LeBron think about? Like, so you're like, by four, I was already fed up with it. And then, like, the next thing was like, Gary, come on, bro, 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 bro. like, and it's just like these guys. Like, you could tell by the end of the round. Like Austin Reeves was like, "I'm done dealing with people." Like, and that's what like I talked to Marquise Brownlee, and he was like, "Hey, truth be told, I'm a three hour golfer. Like, we're playing eighteen and three. Like, we are going." Who quick. said that? Marquise Brownlee. No shit. He's like, we, ain't, you know, because it, it was almost it was a six and a half hour round. Oh my god. Yes. Well, you got TV and cameras and all it, that. That right? wasn't it, really. It was not it. It was just every, pace of play. Every yes, every time you got to a tee box or a green, we're getting out and signing autographs or taking pictures. And oh, these guys, yeah. they are the troopers of the troopers because you know, hey, can you get a pic? Yeah, sure. Smile, you know, like hey, you know. Well, do they, that stuff. I'm sure they have to though, right? Because well, it's their. It's so, their, I mean, that's how they make it bread and butter. But you exactly. can see where a lot of those guys end up being I don't know Dave what's the word I'm looking for you know not narcissistic but they stay like leave me the fuck alone I just want to play golf well but in their they they have two personas they have that public persona where it's the guy slapping you on the back like hey yeah brother good to see you yeah let's take this shot yeah and then the guy you see at home that doesn't want to talk to anybody doesn't want to do anything Mm -hmm. realistically he's probably clinically depressed not happy like, because you can't, you lose some of that, you know, and if you're not a fan of the show and a guy like Garrett Clark's walking down the road. Okay. So you're saying you're talking about heckling, like not necessarily heckling, but Hey, who's, what's it like playing with LeBron? You know, I mean, what's I guess MJ it, the goat. So this Bob does sports guy that I'm talking about. Yeah. He did it. He, so he got to go to the masters and they did a lot of, uh, Forget the barbecue. I come to Memphis for Tony Finau. And 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 Finau's believe it. He's walking There's off the guy. green. There's our guy. I got the flow out of ADP. Wow. You, you're the guy. I you're love. That guy. <laughs> Just a real special set of lettuce on this Cam Smith man. That's tremendous. Hey, Slim Brooks is a liability. <laughs> Just an absolute liability. <laughs> wow. Wow. That man's hunting today. So well, this is but this is yeah. the guy. But that's not yeah. like there. He's saying that for them to hear it. Yes. That's, he's not yeah, yeah, yeah. screaming it. No, 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 no. Because you can hear it at one point yes. when they're teeing off on five. Yeah. Garrett Clark was dating an OnlyFans only fans model last year. Oh. Or Karina Kemp Comp, something like that. Mine Comp? Okay. No, yeah, we got not, it. not quite there. Yeah. But anyways, some asshole, he hits his tee shot and screams, Karina! Oh, God. And, like, his new girlfriend is riding along. With and, like, this group. With the group. And everybody was like, oh, come on, dude. What like, a really? douchebag. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, and it's, <laughs> and they don't always, like, follow the group where they get there where you can hear them. Right. So what some asshole yells on one, that other asshole on two doesn't hear or know right. about it. Right. But yells almost the exact like, same, same thing. thing. And so it, it was brutal. It kind of died off a little bit. Uh, it died off as we got going, yeah. but it was like, I felt there was so, part of me that I felt so bad for those guys. Did they have, did they have their own caddies or did they use Pete Dye caddies? So they had, so Austin Reeves and Garrett Clark had their own caddies, but they were buddies mm-hmm. basically got them into the vent. Right. Yeah. Then the resort supplied a, two caddies for our group. Cause we had six twosomes. Like our two best caddies, right? Were utilized, right? Uh, to go, you know, to be with. Was them. our boy one of them? Which one's our boy? Ta- was Tyler Jordan? One no, of them? Tyler was with our group working security. Oh, was he? Yeah, cool. cool he was cool. working our. He was with our group working security. So, um, 
And it was because it was a wild. I mean, it was just a wild scene. Yeah. And like you, that's neat though. You know what I mean? Like the corn fairy tour when we got to go to see that. Like that is absolutely the highest level of golf I've ever watched. Yeah. Right. Yep. Now I would argue to say that some of these dudes in the good good Midwest Open. They could probably shake hands with some of those dudes on the Corn Ferry Tour. Well, but they're not, it's not that level. And, but I think the level of why they're there would make the Good Good Open more enjoyable to spectate at than watching this dude's hopes and dreams go pissing down his leg. Well, when I think it's a putt on well, it's, it's an interesting conversation because we, we kind of talked about it as we were riding around the course. You're, like the two guys in our group, Brad and Ben, or Colt, his name was Colt. Those guys did play on the tour. Right. And they bounced back and forth between right. Corn so, Ferry so, so and they've, playing on they the have tour. They've been carded professionals. Yes. And yeah. the problem where it gets to it is if you, like, it is such a, and we could, it'd probably be a great conversation for our buddy Red, but the grind is so real. Oh, yeah, dude. Because the Colt guy, like, he. I think it's Colt. I don't know. I want to say it's been Colt. I don't know. We're going to find out, though. But he, um, but, like, it was because I did some research on him, and it was one of those deals where he was, um, like, quoted as saying, like, I don't want to go back down to the Corn Ferry Tour. And probably is nothing against them going down, but it's just a, uh, you know, having to deal with that struggle and fight like it just doesn't make sense you know and you that's colt, how he felt about it. are you thinking of ben coley no or are you thinking about colt nost colt nost yeah yeah colt nost nost or nost, nost. i think nost. it's colt nost yeah so garrett clark and austin reeves brad dalkey marquise brownlee and then colt nost and Paige Speronic. there you go yeah those Paige. were our guys so and they and i mean they were i mean like they're honestly you could probably put our buddy. I've never played golf with Red. I've played with Tyler, and like when Tyler's on, he could probably compete with those guys. Yeah, he might think I'm crazy for saying that, but I mean, when he's driving the like he, I mean, Tyler's a pretty good golfer. I mean, he's single digit handicap. Mm -hmm. Um, so I mean, think about that. Like Teddy talked about it. Teddy's a scratch golfer. Yeah, or he's a point. Five. Yeah, he's like a decimal. He's a, I think a scratch is zero, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so he's just over. So those guys, I mean, Teddy played Division Two golf. Yeah. So, I mean, he's... He could hang with them. Yeah, yeah. same level as... I mean, if he was Pinky, playing... I playing mean, these guys, these guys... Can well, but it. Pinky's probably five or six uh, handicap. Maybe. I mean, these guys are close to... Yeah, scratch are, are better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it's it's... Hey, I've been working on my handicap. Yeah. yeah, I was happy to see that the other day. Yeah, I don't know why. So, you talk about getting the yips. Uh huh. The warden and I went out uh, a couple Sundays back, and I I was ready to quit. Like I'm never going to play again. Like this was terrible. Like I don't know why I couldn't get off the tee box. Boy. Short game sucked. I wanted to break my new putter over my knee. Just the whole. It was just a terrible round of golf. Lost two or three balls. Not good. <clears throat> and then I went on Father's Day, and I played with my dad and my brother on Sunday. And it was, like I said earlier, it was a uh, like a one forty five tea time. It was hotter than shit, you know what I mean? But there was a breeze. We had I was on call, so I didn't I didn't have any beverages. I just drank water. Yeah. But uh, you know, I shot a forty eight, and that was the first time. On nine holes, of course, yeah, and that's the first time I've I've ever shot around in that area. Mm -hmm. So then, fast forward till Wednesday this week, Juneteenth, I took Eleanor along, and we went out and played nine with a cart. And uh, according to my calculations, I I shot probably around. I think I shot a forty three. Hell yeah. And I don't know why I shot a 43, but like I birdied a couple holes, which is wild. Uh, finished around with the same ball again. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I just, I've been trying to take some little tips and tricks that our buddy Pinky and 
Teddy Hoops, you know, and some other stuff that trying to take some, you know, work on my drive, getting off the tee box and not trying to swing off, swing out of my socks and, and, and try to, you know, tone down that real hard, nasty slice that I've got, you know, and stuff like that, you know, and then just trying to strike my irons better, you know what I mean? But I think it's a, it's a, it's a frustrating game, you know what I mean? I am, uh, but I'm, I'm starting to have some fun when I go out and play. Like used to, I mean, I get, I have fun when I play golf all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, you know, at the end of the day, don't get me wrong. We're all competitive. You know, like we talked about this a couple of weeks ago about being competitive, but like never, never am I going to try to win at golf. You know what I mean? Cause I just, I don't think I'm there yet. Like person, like individually, like my own ball type thing. You know, I'm not gonna go. I am playing in the shootout. I am playing in the Ruxer shootout. Oh, did you sign up? I did. I'm gonna try that uh, for myself and see how that goes. Because those, like, that's what Brado was saying. You know, friend of the show, Brado was all. Remember, did you see his not to brag post? You know, but yeah, he, I saw he, that. he took that. You know, in that flight. You know, so a blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then. You know, type deal, but. I don't know. I just been I've been playing a lot more um, than I have in a long time, and I've just uh, I've been having fun doing it. And I just uh, I don't know. I've, I've got the itch, you know. Finally got my clubs, you know that I the way I like them and stuff. I do by chance uh, have to. I'm playing tomorrow, and I need to switch my golf bags out. I actually went and procured another golf bag this evening because. Nice. Sunday or Wednesday after Evelyn and Eleanor and I played when I got back to the country club to the clubhouse and uh, to put my golf bag back in my car I had about five handles sticking out of the bottom of my bag oh boy not really sure what happened there maybe a bump or two really just uh, caused her to blow out but that was a used bag anyway golf bags are expensive Mm -hmm. why is that I mean I know they're nice and everything and they want them to be super light but I mean, Jesus Christ! Does a go- why does a golf bag have to cost and you know four hundred dollars? My whole you- set cost half of that. With I know. The bag. I know. That's what I Did mean. Did you buy a new set? No, I've been looking at used irons though. I don't yeah. know. I told you I have those tailor made sitting yeah. in my garage. I forgot all. About I've got Titleist yeah. copies in my garage. Yeah. I mean, at, I'm not. You, they're sitting in a bag. Yeah, mine are in a Ping Hoofer bag as we speak. Hoofer. Yeah. You get the Hoofer bag from Pinky? I did get a Hoofer bag from a friend of the program, Derek Bowling. He, oh. He hooked me up. But he did have another uh, one. Schultz that he, Insurance? Uh, no. <laughs> Schultz. Oh, God. You're killer. <laughs> no, he... Did. he uh, we did that, I and know. he gave me shit. It's, yeah. He told me that he had... Schmutzler. He said he had agency. two of them. He said, I got two bags for you to pick with. I sent, uh, I sent a text to all of... Uh, the golf nerds that I know, I, I feel comfortable saying that golf nerds, but I, I sent a big group message dimple out heads. to a bunch of them dimple heads and said, Hey guys, does anybody have an extra golf bag hiding in a corner or, uh, anything like that, you know, that they want to get rid of? Cause I, I've had a blowout and I've got two outings coming up and I, <laughs> I need a golf bag. And first thing, big Derek was like, I got you. You know what I mean? Okay. So I call him today and he's like, I got two options for you. I got a used, ping hoofer bag that you can just have like it's 10 years 15 years old i've used it but it's in good shape i take care of my shit you know all this stuff or i got this brand new callaway carry bag it's but it's it's a pete dye bag and it's got like the pete dye literature stuff on the one side of it you know callaway it's gray and but i'm gonna have to sell that one i'm gonna have to have some coin for that unit you know yeah <clears throat> so i went and looked at them today and I just don't think I'm a I'm I don't think I'm a, a carry bag kind of guy. You know what I mean? Because they're so light, like the new ones, like that Callaway had that he had. I mean, that thing felt like a Walmart sack with a couple of graphite walking sticks for legs. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I just felt like I would destroy that thing. Like it was just and I yeah, I'm another pet peeve guy here. Big pet peeve of mine. When I approach my ball to make my continuation towards the green, one of the things that irks me the most is having to fight to get my club out of my golf bag. Like when they all 
wad F together in the bottom. Like you got the dividers where you put them in, right? Yeah. But like when you go to just yank that son of a bitch out of there and you got to wrestle around with it, I hate that. I have no idea why, but I cannot stand it. So that's why I feel like I'm more of like a, um, what do they call them? Like a uh, tour bag, like a yeah. like a big time uh, cart bag kind of but guy. But like if you, like looking at the bags that those guys carried and played with this weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're not fancy. Mm-mm. Like it really, the guy that's got all the golf gadgets and all this other shit. Yeah. It is, it's not required. No. I mean, because those guys, like when we played down at Knoxville in that pro-am, like I would have guessed that our pros bag was came from Dave's house. Yeah. Like I don't know, he maybe had a head cover. That's bad. <laughs> you, you don't This deserve- hill won't mother <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dave, you didn't deserve that shot. Freaking dick, ditch digging some bitch back here. Dug his out of his granddaddy's <laughs> attic. Yeah, but it's kind of one of those things. Like it wasn't like you had been like, ah, when was the last time you played? You know, kind of that <laughs> dust is on there. Yeah. It just kind of looked homely. You know, I did deal. get a new. Ho- I did get a new head cover this week. Yeah, I got that oh, yeah. that beer. It's a natural slice. Did I show you that? Uh-uh. Yeah, it looks like a it looks like natural light, but it says natural slice. Yeah, because I figured my whole hope is I get better every year. Yeah, I start understanding my game better. Mm-hmm. Playing in competitions helps you yeah. get better. Yeah, I'll never like my goal where I'm at now. I could maybe get to a single digit handicap and probably realistically it would all be chipping and putting. Yeah. I've been finding myself more confident with a putter in my hand than I ever have been. That'll go away. Happens to everybody. What do you mean? Everybody thinks they're putting well. It looks like you're freaking putting it into the ocean, standing on the beach. Yeah. And then there's times where it looks like you're putting it into a freaking thimble. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you don't know how the like. I don't know. Then that's the bad thing. Like, I mean, where I park, I am a hundred yards away from a chipping and putting green. Like, yeah. I can take a sack of balls and yeah. could practice fifteen twenty minutes every day, and I'd probably be a lot better scoring wise. Right. But, I mean, that's problem. I, you know, like I fought hitting at OB a lot, and then we've kind of gotten better off that. But right. you know, that's probably the biggest finishing around using the same ball that you start with. Is a huge thing for me. I've only done it once, and I kept the golf ball. I, it's still in my cup holder right now. As like a matter a, of fact, it rolled. A, it rolled out of the floorboard of my expedition today at more for less. Oh shit! And I had to go down to First Street and get it out of the gutter <laughs> pan and put it back in my car because that some bitch is going on the shelf. I wrote the date and everything on it. Yeah, and uh, screwed it on that bag. But now the date's all wore off. I should have taped over. It. <clears throat> screwed it onto your golf bag. Well, I got a little screw on like hook that you'd use for a picture and I drilled a hole in the golf ball and put it on there. Yeah. And then put it on a little, you know, zipper tighter on the I'll be damn. What a deal. Yeah. Never thought about that. Maybe I'll do that to this one. But anyway, I got a I got a golf bag today. I gotta get them transferred over. Uh we're playing just for funsies tomorrow. Me and my brother are gonna play. And then Sunday morning, we're going to play for the Huntingburg VFW in their scramble. Oh, that'd be good. Be you coming o'clock. over after that? I uh, hope not. <laughs> uh, eight o'clock shotgun start. But Evelyn, or excuse me, Eleanor is playing in the, uh, what's it called? Diamonds and Dirt and Diamonds or something. The big softball tournament at Huntingburg this week. And then uh, Maxwell's got his, uh, they got their first all-star tournament. They're playing up in Odin. Yeah, Max and Weston, they'll be up there. So you'll have to give me some, uh, my wife is terrible at that, what? like giving updates. Oh, I, I send updates regular. I know, good. You'll have to do that because yeah. my wife doesn't do that. Okay. Because I'll be coaching Eleanor. But, like, we play at three and five. So I think I might, even though it's an hour drive, I might try to jump up there for that eleven o'clock game. Yeah, eleven twenty, and then like a weird ass time. Yeah, yeah, and then Sunday they're not starting till two o'clock. But you're golfing in the morning. Oh. Yeah, you'll be able to make it up. Yeah. I'm not going because Eleanor is playing at the same time. Oh. And, and, and you see, I don't know if they get a shitty seed. We'll play at eight twenty or eight ten or something like that Sunday morning. What are you gonna do about golf then? I won't. I won't go to the game. I'll play golf. 
boy. Yeah, and then because well, there's 17 coaches, I mean, they'll be yeah. fine. I think, but uh, it's single out on Sunday, so hopefully we do well. But other than, other than that, I mean, golf, I'm super stoked for you. I mean, that's cool shit whenever I knew it was coming up because Wednesday, whenever we played, Eleanor and I, we, just two of us, and I, I, I think I, I so I parred one <clears throat> and didn't screw around much, and then I hit two about 40 out from the green didn't quite get there and uh, a group of boys younger high school age or no college age boys actually two of two members of uh the band flood road Mm. were playing in front of us with another two fellers that were at the good good open and had seen and talked to you and stuff and he had a hat on and it just it just struck me. I was like, oh, yeah, hey, Casey was up there. Did you guys see him? He's like, oh, yeah, we saw him. We talked to him. He was right in the thick of it, man, like holding their drivers and getting people back and like all kinds of shit, you know? Yeah. And I was like, no way. That's awesome. And then I was looking at it online, and it said, I Googled it, and it said, you know, highlights are available on Peacock. And I was like, holy shit. So I'm just watching it, and all of a sudden, bam, there you were. And I screenshot it, and I sent it to Smoke, and I was like, look at this beautiful bastard right there on TV. Yeah, that's our boy. You don't realize how fat a sack of shit you no, are. Oh, that's, that's cool, you, man. I think TV. that's neat as hell, dude. I'm, I'm stoked. That was Well, really plus, awesome. and that's a awesome I mean, when it's a golf shirt like that, you know, it doesn't hide yeah. much. Oh, good it, God. Snug. Get over it. Hey, you know what we need to do? We need to take a it. quick pause for the cause. Hey, Wonders. You've heard Mace talking about it for a few weeks now, but we wanted to be sure you got it. Talking about courage for Courtney. Our friend Courtney Drew has been diagnosed with cancer and needs our support. To help ease the financial burden of treatment and everything else, some awesome folks are hosting a fundraiser on July 13th from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Venue 1408 in Huntingburg. It'll be an awesome evening with live music, dinner, dancing, a silent auction, and a bake sale. It's going to be a fun night for everybody involved, but most importantly, it'll be helping a great family get through a really tough time. Can't make it? Well, don't forget there's an online store. Look below for the link or scan the QR code that you see on your screen right now. Now, these are pre-orders, so you can order at any time, but the orders will be sent off to production in batches. You'll be given information on your batch and pickup options when you order. Let's rally together and show the power of community. Hey, I don't know why I pointed, but we're back. Here we go. We are back. And Dave, what the hell is this on our desk? Oh, my God. Well, we talked about this a little bit on Wednesday here. Right? Oh, so this we did. is our uh, donated by Lisa Pink Staff, powered by you, Mortgage. Right. Getty Rody 24. Right. Tag's still on it. We've got the five Dutchman shirts. Right. Five Dutchman koozies. Right. Five tickets to go see the Dubois County Bombers play the Terre Haute Rex, I believe, on July 18th. Right. Correct. Thirsty Thursday. At the Wandering Dutchman's Bar Top. Yeah. Conveniently located atop the first first baseline. Yeah. Then we got our stickers, one for each person at the game and one for the cooler. Uh Uh-huh. And I think that's where we were at Wednesday. Yeah. Correct. And we said we're saving something for Friday. Yep. So Friday, today, we're going to dump in. Uh, the folks at Bob's Liquors heard what was going on. They wanted to help. So they've thrown in a Bob's Liquors hat and a $50 Bob's Liquors gift card. Oh, holy shit. Look you there. Work wherever. So, I mean, we've got a cooler. We've got shirts. We've got baseball tickets. We've got koozies, yeah. stickers. Right. And now you can have a nice, you know, cold beer waiting for you when you get back home. Nice. So all that is... What we've got so far, with a little bit of time left to, uh, I mean, there's still room in the cooler boys. Yeah, oh, lots. Yeah. There's room. Yeah, yeah. So uh, tune in next week and see what happens. Uh, but yeah, less than a month away. Yeah. Then you'll get your opportunity to bid on this bad boy. Yeah. And that yeah. is for the uh, Courage for Courtney. Uh, that'll be coming up on July 13th. There at venue 1408. Begins at five o'clock. Tickets still for sale for it. Dine and dance. Go see him. Go support. I know that list of what they've got for a silent auction is great. Um, if you're a golfer, try to sneak in there, snag you a foursome there at the Pete Dye. That was donated by the resort. Uh, get in there and look at some of those things because they are 
I looked through that list and I was pretty damn impressed. Yeah. We've kind of done this through a partnership. Uh, Lisa Pinkstaff, you mortgage. If you are buying a home, you don't have to go the traditional bank route. Right. You don't have to go down to the bank. You don't have to go through that process. You can go to Lisa, utilize Lisa and her services, get you the best mortgage rate you can get, and take away a lot of the headache. Not as much of the red tape there. Lisa's going to get you taken care of. She's all about building relationships. That's she right. runs it on her own. She yep. went out on her own. Yep. And obviously, she's making it and thriving it. Killing. Of course, thanks yep. to you guys. I mean, we are more than happy. Rusty, Courtney, very good people in our community, Definitely. fans of the show. Definitely. We have no problem giving what we're giving. That's right. A big shout out to the crew at Bob's Liquors. We appreciate what they've donated and what they've done uh, because that's awesome. And like Dave said, there is some more coming yet he won't let me tell you Mm -mm. trust me i want to to tell you but you have to wait we got a little bit yet to go now on top of that there's some other things going on with this july 12th our friends at Huntingburg grind are doing dogs burgers chips lunchtime lunchtime free will donation right up on fourth street they're donating the proceeds to that to for uh courage for courtney that's right so that is on july 12th during lunchtime right there on fourth street mm-hmm. you're probably going to see the big fella over there in the high vis uh, maybe we'll see we'll see he only gets a half hour for lunch depends on how when you're is. the city of Huntingburg's top dog you have to work dave yeah. you just can't ride around sign autographs you got that dog take in. pictures yeah he does he God. does uh, street department. I think they're going to rename it the Zachary D. Mason. All right, street moving department. on. Here we go. Wait, well, hold on. I'm not done yet. Okay. Uh, our buddy Mark Siebert and Celebration Ice, beginning July one and running through July seventh. One hundred percent, David Allen Smoker. One hundred percent. You're a brainiac. One hundred percent is all of it. All of it. All of the sales. From the 31 South Clay Street Honor Box, which that is their shop over there. Mm -hmm. That's where they got the fridges over there, making all the ice. That's where they got those little ice cube trays. Somebody's back. Somebody's grandma's back there, you know, Uh, cracking them open. Getting it done. Getting that ice done. You know, they're back there doing that. So the Honor Box is back there. Cash or check. H bag seven pound bag sold h bag h bag <laughs> the honor bag box is at the ice plant where you can buy <laughs> seven pound bag of ice for a dollar cash or check 24 7 on the honor system a hundred percent of those sales are going to all of the it. benefit all listen of it. we've said it before and we'll say it again you go over there yeah you can buy just a dollar bag of ice and donate a dollar but throw a five in there. Don't look for cha- don't take change. That's not the honor box. Throw a hundred in there. That's a violation of the honor box. It's going to a good cause. It's going to Courtney. It's going to Rusty. It's going to their family. And we are more than happy to support the courage for Courtney and everything about it. We've got more coming. Big thank you to Lisa. Big thank you to Bob's. Big thank you to you guys. Big thank you to Mark Siebert and our friends at Celebration Ice. Yeah. Nice. Boom. There we go. All right, now it is time for the three big things, Braddo's three big things to be exact, brought to you by Merkley and Sons. Welcome to Braddo's three big things for the week, sponsored by Merkley and Sons, the ultimate destination for meat enthusiasts. The Merkley's ad has been heating up. Just at the end of April, they had smoked wieners, seasoned patties, fresh pork tenderloin, and the flavored brats on sale. Stop in and see the fellas today. Tell them the Dutchman sent you. All right, here we go. Brado's three big things brought to you by Merkley and Sons, the ultimate destination for meat enthusiasts. Three big things for the week of June 16th. Summer heat is here. Around 270 million people in the United States could see temperatures at or above 90 degrees this week as an intense heat wave ushers in the official start of summer on Thursday. Parts of the Midwest to the Northeast could endure the longest heat wave they've seen in decades, the National Weather Service Weather Prediction Center has said. Brado, I'm going to guess maybe this has come up on the show already, so I'll throw the Dutchman a curveball. What is your go-to summer beverage when the heat cranks up? You stick into an ice cold beer, vodka lemonade, etc. I mean, if Brado would just attend the 
the Wednesday recording, he would know yeah. some of these things. Yeah, it wasn't even a curveball. It wasn't even a curveball. I mean, seen this, it, we've seen this pitch. He I'm going to hit ball. this. I'm going to hit this hanger f- till kingdom come and the cows come back. I am going. Just like I said earlier, it's a bad day to bush be a bush light. But I will say one thing also. You give me a fresh out of the Yeti. Been in there in like Yeti ice water for hours. Cold. Like a seltzer, like a high noon or, Ooh, or, or, or a white claw Ooh. or something like that. And just, Ain't no laws when you're drinking claw, I like baby to boy. hit it raw when I'm <laughs> drinking the claw. But like, I just, you know what I mean? Like, when uh-huh. you, oh, God damn, I could suck the bottom out of one of them bastards. I bet you could. Ah, that all. Ha, 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 Give her the old hock to it. Dave, what about you? Uh, yeah, you gotta you gotta hydrate. Uh, for some reason, on this Friday episode, it sounds the way Friday more. Friday variety show. Yep. Wednesday, the vodka lemonade didn't sound that good, but this description, the vodka uh, lemonade's got uh, you thinking. Yeah. You know, a, a surprising choice that I'll throw into that bourbon and lemonade. Yuck. Mm. I've had it. You've I've you've made me one before, and it was. I don't that know big. when because you don't come up. So but I'm I don't just know. saying, like it would be. I don't know if how would that. Every would now and then, I fall in love. I just think I that whiskey makes up. you hot, right? Hot. Whiskey makes me half crazy sometimes, so I just laid <laughs> off that. <laughs> oh oh God. shit! By the way, it's summertime, so the fact that it's ninety degrees, like we're used to that. Yeah, I've like, been here for two weeks now when this comes out. Yeah. Mm. Secret Service robbed. That's great f- news. Oh, boy. <laughs> a U.S. Secret Service member was robbed at gunpoint during... Pre- what? These mother f- job is to protect the f- president. And you get robbed at gunpoint? You got your pants down around your f- ankles? <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> My goodness. During President Joe Biden's recent trip to, well, it's California for you, for a Hollywood fundraiser, police say they have not found the suspect who also stole the Secret Service member's bag during the startling ordeal. I mean, seriously, aren't, aren't these guys the Secret Service supposed to be like the most impossible guys to rob? And they haven't caught the guy? <laughs> Makes you feel good about our presidential protection. If that's the kind of work he's getting, just think what the rest of us get. Oh, my goodness. Jesus Christ. Sorry for the rant, but when your job is to protect the president and they expect the unexpected, how does some low-life son of a bitch in Hollywood get the jump on you and rob you of your shit? I bet the mother didn't even have a gun. He just threw that in their port to not look so bad. <laughs> he, he that son of a bitch got robbed with a dildo. <laughs> It's a big flappy baby bastard. It just scared me. We can't put that in the report. It was a gun. Uh, it was at least God. a Glock 20. <laughs> Might have been a Smith and Weston. I, you know, first off, I like, have nothing. Our president <laughs> has enough trouble, but if the people that are supposed to be protecting him aren't able to do the job, like this is problematic. Kind of goes with the rest of the cabinet. He probably yeah. picks Not his own to do goons. The jobs. What if this guy was the Perry person? Perry Curly and Moe. <laughs> what if this guy was Uncle the, Blinky. Uh, shout out to our buddy uh, Mitch Carter doing great work as always. But, you know, the old personality hire. Yeah. What if this is the guy that, like, <laughs> he couldn't make it in the FBI? Or he tried uh, for the CIA. They man, wouldn't this is take one him. good looking son of a bitch. We better could, get him on the squad. He <laughs> could take, he couldn't make it in the FBI. They put him in the Secret Service, and then it turns out that this guy can't even make coffee <laughs> in the old lounge. You had but one job. <laughs> for some Larry. reason. Larry, you had one job. For some reason, Bill's on vacation, and they need this guy to step in, and they put him like, hey, listen, bud, I know this is your first time out of the office. Like uh, Paul Blart. We, we literally need you to just stand over there. <laughs> Don't shoot anybody and don't let anybody shoot the president. <laughs> oh, okay. Some guy walks up with a big black, hey, come here and give me all your money and your shit. Oh, God, no, don't shoot. Uh, That's a tough spot. Wow. Oh, that poor yeah. bastard. To protect and serve. Huh. Uh, What's how bad do you think that? <laughs> I'm just thinking of this guy walking through the story. <laughs> All right, Johnson, tell me again. What happened? Because yeah. <laughs> well, we don't believe well, it. Well, then he scared me, 
So I gave him my gun. Now what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, what a uh, Or the real story of it was this guy was doing hookers and blow, and they ended up taking a shit because rule number one, you don't take them back to your hotel. Right. Rule number two, you don't have your personal stuff sitting out there right. for them to take. Yeah. And this is what's happened. So now they make it sound like he was robbed at gunpoint. Right. But Hollywood's a cesspool. They deserve everything they got. Right. And the reality that they think going to have a bunch of celebrities like Jimmy Kimmel tell us what's really going on in America when that son of a bitch doesn't have a clue. There we go. You can have it. There we go. Oh, oh, hey. I like okay. a rant when I'm on the listening in. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't talk politics here. We talk about what everybody wonders about. What's, uh, what's the third one? House of the Dragon season two Good. premiere recap. At last, the wait is over. The second season of House of the Dragon returns Sunday to HBO. Never heard of it. Is really? this supposed to be a spinoff to the Game of Thrones? I'll admit, I've never watched it. Have the Dutchman. I've watched episode one of season one. I really got into uh, Game of Thrones there last year, mm-hmm. last season, like we talked about. Yeah. And it's a it's a spinoff, but not a continuation. This is actually like a prequel, more or less. This is uh, the stories that lead up. Are there to- tits in it? Uh, I only watched one episode, and I was probably pickled. Um, so you I don't remember watch like fifteen but minutes? Dun- no. Dungeons and Dragons, Dungeons Game and of Dragons. Thrones, rather. Yeah, that was lots like a of, softcore porn. Yeah, lots of that going on. So I'd only assume it's probably the same. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've never heard of it. Yeah, I. All right. I've heard of it. I've not watched it. We don't have HBO. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, my voice there. It's gone oh, away. Boy, hmm. I'm gonna power through. Uh, here we go. Game. Big thank you to Brad O. We appreciate everything you do. Thank you to Merkley and Sons. Now we get to the Dear Dutchman. Dear Dutchman, I live in a region. I live in a region. Region currently experiencing a heat wave hotter than a jalapeno in a sauna. The temperatures are skyrocketing, and staying cool is about as likely as a snowstorm in July. I've got young kids and elderly parents. And I'm starting to worry they'll turn into human puddles. Um, What can I do to keep my family from melting into the furniture? Any advice on surviving this heat wave without having to live in the freezer would be much appreciated. Sweatly yours, sizzling in southern Indiana. Wow. Well, uh, first off, I'd say find somebody with a pool or a lake. Or you could go up to the city of Huntingburg to the lake. Uh, swimming's cringy right now. Yeah, it's pretty hot. You gotta go river down, swimming. You gotta go down deep. Pretty cringy too. You gotta oh, go. Oh, water's always moving. You can kill somebody in there today, and that blood will be gone before tomorrow morning breakfast. Yep. yep. So go you just be uh, upstream of the. Find, just find some swimming. Go uh, hit a splash pad. Go down here to Holland Park. Hit the splash pad up. Go up to City Park and Huntingburg. Is there splash pad open? Yeah. I thought well, was... no, it's under. It's got some malfunctions. They're, they're working through it, but uh, I mean, it's kind of a tough spot to yeah. have that happen now. I mean, yeah. we support our park boys. Yeah, sweet. The street department has nothing to do with that. Uh, they're trying to get the park boys are trying to get that up and running there. But the pool is fully functioning, and it's it's nice and cool because they. Uh, that's a big. That's a big uh, big pool, and they put fresh water in there. Every year, quite often, and it stays pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I just um, stay hydrated, go outside, stay in the shade, do your stuff in the morning and the evening, like we talked about on uh, Wednesday or whenever day that was. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's not I mean it ain't that bad yet. Project I've been wanting to work on here for keeping cool in the hot weather, mm-hmm. especially in like a no power situation. Yeah. So. Since there's such a sale going on soon for a good cause at the Honor Box, I'd go get you a bunch of ice. Mm-hmm. And you put that ice in a five-gallon bucket that's got a lid on it. Mm-hmm. And then you put a little battery-operated fan on the lid and a little hose action coming out. It's like a portable air conditioner. Just ice-cold air right on you. Hmm. Hmm. You're going to go get ice for a dollar a bag. What a deal. Yeah, that's pretty good. Makes sense. Yeah. You get like a trash bag or something and trap that cold air around you. Hell yeah. That'd be neat. Uh, what are you thinking about? Well, if you um, if you work in it, I used to work with a Hispanic fella. Yeah. And when we started working construction, 
and it started getting hot, he'd say, boss, man, we got to start earlier. Yeah. He was a big uh, acclimate to the weather throughout the day. Definitely. So if you get out in it early, stay out in it. Oh, yeah. Just ride it out. Obviously, plenty of water breaks for those blue-collar workers out there. I mean, I've got to take kind of long sleeves into the office because they turn the air up a little bit and Mm -hmm. get chilly. Yeah. Um, But, uh, you know, and it's tough. Valet's got to go get my truck because I don't want to – I want them to get the heat out of it by the time they get there, pick me up. But, uh, no, kind of be smart with what you're doing. Right. Pay attention to what you're eating and drinking as well. I mean, I know we talk about drinking beers when we do this, but don't go have a chocolate milkshake and then go try to run three miles. You know, it seems silly. But I had uh, some junior bacon cheese sits heavy on you today, and uh, that was probably a bad idea. Yeah, and then we put about five hundred bales of straw up after that, and it was not good. I thought I was gonna yeah toss. I'll tell you what, neighbor toss. Doug was trying to get one bale of straw down earlier. Is that right? I still don't know if he got it done yet. Really? You just said he was putting five hundred up. He was fighting to get that one down, submerged in the pond. Oh, was it a barley bale? Could be. Yeah. Yep, that's what all sources are saying. Probably. Are you for sure he was trying to get a bail down and it wasn't Mrs. Neighbor Doug? Did he cut? Oh, well, boy. Mrs. Smoker took him a big old concrete weight with a rope on it to help him out. Did so he, I hope did it was cut Mrs. His, did neighbor. He, Mrs. Hey. Smoker is not accessory to murder. <laughs> did he cut the string? Doesn't appear so. It's floating against the... You uh, got to cut the string. Get it out there. Cut the string. Dumbass. <laughs> Uh, there, there's no reason we'll talk to, about that with neighbor Doug there's, later there's no, no reason to do it now uh but you know just kind of be aware yeah you know don't eat heavy meals like now's not the time to get a pot roast in no um yeah so stay I, with the seasons yeah Carnival. eat a lot of watermelon nuts yeah you know salad out of the garden get you some get god you some i can't tomatoes. wait till my tomatoes start popping yeah We've had uh, we got a couple uh, tomato plants last evening. We've got some haven't planted them yet. No, well they're already three feet tall. I don't know where Jenna found them, but she's seen them and brought them home. Well, yeah. Oh. Why buy them early when Real King will grow them for you? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's our, <laughs> problems always getting yeah. started. Yeah. Well, my problem of it is, is we had some come out with uh, bottom fruit uh, rot. Yeah, bottom rot. Yeah. And so I read that it was it could be a calcium issue. Mm-hmm. Or not enough watering. I put uh, an egg with the shell and tums in the hole when I planted mine. Yeah. See, and I've never. What the d- tums do? Calcium. The tums, the calcium yeah. that helps your fruit. Yeah. Um, I've never done them in five gallon buckets, and we did them this year because I just didn't get to the garden. That's going to be a this fall project. Um. But that's where we've had the struggle. Because we're doing first, the cornucopia next year. You put holes in the bottom of your bucket. Yeah, you have to say so if you don't, you'll they'll be bottom rot big time or root rot. Yeah, because that water. Do I have nowhere to go? I mean, there's like I put like six or seven like probably small holes in there. Yeah, because they said you didn't want the water to run out too fast. Right. Um, but uh, I don't know. It just we had like I was excited the first tomato and then I could see the bottom rot on. I was like. Son right so i looked it up and then that's what it was but uh yeah there we go there we go hey fellas unfortunately we have reached the end of our time we've got some other things to do we got to go bury mrs neighbor doug in the lake because she's floated back up again and uh we're just gonna have to get that's that how rumors get wow yeah, well <laughs> hey mrs neighbor doug is alive we saw her earlier uh, this morning or this morning. And Didn't see her last, last week. Last pass. <laughs> it was last our week. We saw Hope Equipment. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. One more trip around the table. The last pass is proudly brought to you by our friends at Hope Outdoor Power. Big Mace has a Cub Cadet. Esquire has a Kubota Zero Turn. And Smoke has a Kubota B Series Tractor. You could say we're big fans of what Hope Outdoor Power has to offer. It's time to mow responsibly and upgrade your rig. Want to mow quick? Save some time? Get a zero turn. Need something a little more than a lawn tractor? Check out their Kubota compact tractors today. No time like the present for an upgrade. Big Mace, our friends at Hope Outdoor Power sponsor this segment. What have, what say you for your last pass? Uh, well, like I said uh, on Wednesday there, um, peace, love, and positivity. I'm going to mix it up here. Oh, yeah. Last On Wednesday, you went with uh, Keep Your Stick on the Ice. Yeah. Peace, love, and positivity. Uh, stay cool. Stay hydrated. Um, when you're listening to this, it's supposed to be uh, 
pretty effing hot too, uh, in the nineties again. Um, take care of your, uh, furry friends and all that jazz, like I said on Wednesday, but also, uh, the deadline. One thing Casey, uh, we didn't say is for the courage for Courtney dine and dance you, you need. So this episode right here will come out on when. Uh, like the 27th Friday. Maybe? Yeah. Eighth? Probably the 28th. Yeah. Friday, the 28th. So the deadline to buy your tickets for the dine and dance is on Monday, July the 1st. They got to get those tickets purchased. You got to get them purchased. Um, go on the Facebook page, courage for Courtney, or you can even, you know, search it on Google. It'll pop up all kinds of jazz or go to the link in the video or go to the link in this video. Cause old, old smoke dragon's going to drop her down there in the bottom, but there is scroll down a little bit. It's there's a Venmo page in there where you can get on there and uh, beep, pop, boop, boop, and get your tickets and everything ready to go. It's going to be a great time for uh, a great family. So, uh, other than that, uh, that's all I got smoke. Yeah, another buddy that we've talked about a little bit had some stuff come back, and he's going to have to be battling a little harder than he thought with his things. So it seems like it's been a real yeah. tough year for a whole lot of folks. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think there's been lots of good things happen for a lot of folks too. So it seems like it's easy to dwell on the negative. But I do think that we uh, we emulate the feelings we feel. So you got to right. try and stay positive. Amen. Casey. Amen to that. Uh, big thank you to the Hope Outdoor Power and Merkley and Sons. Thanks for riding along with us. Obviously, uh, Lisa Pinkstaff, um, Bob's Liquors. Um, thank you to those guys. Uh, we appreciate them supporting what we're helping donate there. And, uh, you know, make a point to uh, head to Honeyburg Grind on July 12th, as well as uh, what you need to do and attend the Dine and Dance on July 13th for the uh, courage for Courtney. I uh, don't have a whole lot. Obviously, uh, things have been good, great, grand, wonderful. But, you know, to your point, smoke, they can turn in an instant. Makes you appreciate and enjoy things, especially, the you know, the experience I had, you know, working as close as we did on the, the good, good golf yeah. thing. And uh, that's pretty cool. So I am trying to enjoy the summer, but I tell you what, the uh, I miss – the school routine a little bit yeah because we are in no hurry to get out of the lindeman household in the morning <laughs> it is a struggle and it's kind of the first year zoe having kindergarten gonna be a big first grader next year like we just are a little lazy getting out in the morning so uh, and that's on janelle and i's side as well but uh you know there's just jamming so many activities into one day dave you just get to bed late so yeah anyways happy to be here enjoy your friday always great to be with you guys have good weekends depending on when you listen to this but other than that we are too blessed to be stressed and we'll send you away on the weekend with this dutchman Dutchman out. out